Hey guys, it's David from TheUnlocker.com. Uh, lately, there's been a lot of talk about Nokia and their Nokia X lineup of smartphones. Now, basically what this is, is it's a lineup of budget smartphones from Nokia that all run Android. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Nokia and Android for a very long time. Uh, basically, people love how Nokia makes great hardware and they wish they had a better operating system on it, um, and Android always springs to mind. So now that it's finally happened, there are a lot of mixed feelings. Some people think it's amazing, some people think it's absolutely horrible. I, for one, also have mixed feelings, but regardless of how I feel about it or how anyone feels about it, I think there are a few things that need to be cleared up about this new relationship and about what exactly it means, um, and then you guys can decide for yourselves whether you think all of this is good or bad. Okay, so first we need to start with what Nokia's Android actually is. Um, so Android is an open source, and we've probably heard that before. It's an open source project. Um, it is a operating system that a manufacturer or even you or I could just put on our device free of charge. Doesn't cost anything, right? So the misconception here, though, is there are certain things that are that we're used to seeing in Android that we think are just included in that operating system and are also free, but they're actually not. Uh, what I'm referring to are things like Gmail, Google Maps, um, and very importantly, the Play Store. These are actually Google's own apps. Google tries to treat it as if they're a app developer just like the rest of us, at least that's what they say, um, and they actually charge a fee, an undisclosed amount, to manufacturers when they use Android and want to include those particular apps. So Android is free, but all of those Google apps are not. Um, and Google has, you know, their own proprietary information with all of those, and they're copyrighted, and they were there apps. So, um, even though we're used to seeing Android as open source, keep in mind that any open source version of Android does not include things like the Play Store, which we're all kind of pretty used to seeing because of Google's close involvement. Um, and, and let's face it, what good is Android without the Play Store sometimes? Um, now, there are other third-party app stores and other third-party apps that replace those things, um, but for the most part, obviously, the Play Store is the most popular place to get apps for Android. With that being said, though, um, obviously, Nokia doesn't care. We all know that Nokia and Microsoft um, both have a lot of their own apps um, that will easily supplement, in their eyes, those Google apps that we're used to seeing. For example, they have Bing, which will replace the Google Search. They have Bing Maps, which will, or Nokia Here Maps, which will replace um, the Google Maps. They even have Nokia now has their own store for Android apps uh, that will replace the Play Store. So that is something you just kind of have to keep in mind when you're thinking of Android on Nokia, you're not necessarily getting all of those things that you're used to seeing in Android. Um, also, on top of that, Nokia has put their own user interface, just like HTC and Samsung and all of them all do, on top of Android. Nokia is being very Windows Phone looking, um, with tiles and grids and very flat design, uh, compared to, say, how HTC and Samsung and whoever else deal with it. So those are just things to keep in mind about the difference between Nokia's Android on, on the X series and Android as we're used to seeing it on most other devices. Okay, now that you know what Nokia's Android is or can be, um, it's important to note that it's not what it has to be. First thing I thought of when I saw the Nokia X lineup was, that is the perfect phone to root. Now, if you don't know what rooting is, it's basically the process of gaining administrative rights um, on an Android device. Now, once we have administrative rights, we actually can access the entire file system and make a whole bunch of changes or whatever we want to the system itself and change things and make them better to our liking. Um, the reason I thought of rooting for this device was because I was pretty sure that Nokia would not put Google software, um, considering their relationship with Microsoft, into their Android devices. So rooting um, would actually afford a way to put them back. Now. If you were so inclined to root and put Google Play and all of those other Google apps on your device, it does mean that you could get around using the Microsoft and Nokia services entirely if, again, you were so inclined. Aside from rooting, Android has always had the ability uh, to sideload apps in APK format. Um, so this means uh, that besides the Google apps, because even though those do come in APK format, they need to be integrated into the system folder and a bunch of other stuff, so they won't work directly out of the box, most of them. Um, but 
other apps. So apps that you're used to seeing that may not be in the Nokia store, um, you can simply Google the name of the app and APK download at the end of that uh, and most likely find it. And all you have to do is download it to the device, tap on it and it'll install um, as long as you've turned off the security that allows you to install third party apps, um, which is simply just checking a box. So easy enough. Um, so that's kind of cool. You can have all of these Android apps that you're used to seeing, even though Nokia may not have picked them up and put them in their store. Um, which sounds great, in theory. Uh, but the issue is here that even if you have the Google Play apps and you do have those apps from Android on this device, it's not gonna quite be the same experience. The reason being that uh, the device itself has very, I won't say outdated hardware, but lower end hardware, um, and then does have an outdated version of Android, which is probably, I think, three cycles old. Um, so it's missing a lot of features, not to mention a lot of hardware acceleration features um, and just performance tweaks that the newer versions of Android have. Now, Jerry from AndroidCentral.com even goes so far to say that the Nokia X lineup is gonna be to Nokia what the Pinto was for Ford, insinuating that even though it'll sell a few, it's utter crap. There is a link underneath this video to his entire article, um, and while I don't agree with the extent of how bad he thinks these devices are, he does have some good points and it's probably worth checking out. Now that we've cleared all of that up, um, I do believe this still could be a smart move for Nokia. Um, one, it can give them back a demographic that they have long since lost, um, and ones that they used to be the undisputed kings of, which is the budget overseas market. These devices are really cheap. The Nokia X starts without contract at $120, around about. Um, and then the Nokia XL, their most expensive in this lineup, is about $150. And then also, there is a feature that most people seem to forget to mention um, on all of these devices, and that's that they're dual SIM. Now, if you've never heard of dual SIM, I'm not really surprised, um, especially if you're in the United States. In the States here, we don't really use dual, dual SIM because we don't have a purpose for it. But if you're in Europe, for example, and you're traveling a business or whatever, and you go from, you know, say France to Spain or wherever, you have to have a new SIM card for that new country, or you'll get hit with outrageous roaming costs. So having those tools, two dual SIMs um, does allow a lot of business people, and a lot of people that travel throughout Europe to have both of those SIMs in the same place, be able to go to other countries, just swap to the other SIM, and still receive calls from their original SIM, and all of this other fun stuff that's a cool feature for people, again, in Europe. Now, if you couple that with the fact that Nokia has not uh, released any information about these devices here in the US or in the UK, I think it's pretty obvious what they're trying to do here. I don't think Nokia is concerned with stepping on Windows Phone's toes um, with this kind of an offering. If you really think about it, any Windows Phone device, or the cheapest Windows Phone device overseas, the Nokia Lumia 510, uh, costs a starting at about $175 with no contract. Now, $55 off, which may not sound like much to US ears, but is a huge gap in other countries, plus the added benefit of being dual SIM, um, and then running a whole plethora of apps that you couldn't normally have run before, eh. Might not be a bad idea for Nokia. And I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about this whole concept. Is it good? Is it bad? What do you have to add? So uh, reach out to me in the comments underneath this video on YouTube or underneath uh, this video on our site. And also check out our Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and let me know what you guys think.